Welcome to the Expanding Consciousness Podcast with your hosts, Michael Wally and Nicholas Hart. In this podcast, we explore ways to sharpen our awareness, make life more enjoyable, be a little kinder, become more authentic, less reactive, more present, and ultimately expand our consciousness. We're happy to have you along for the ride. And if you do enjoy these conversations, please leave a review or a comment as this goes a long way for us. Enough of the promotional talk and enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to the Expanding Consciousness podcast. Uh, Kind of an interesting topic this week. We thought we would talk a little bit about tripping and how to practically integrate the contents of, of your trip. So this one's a little bit top of mind for me because I, I took mushrooms last, last Saturday and, you know, it was a little bit on, on the milder side, but it, it still, there was still some, some content that, that I'd like to respect, that I'd like to integrate, that I'd like to, you know, hopefully transform my life a little bit, right? Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, Nick, when, when was the last time you tripped? Um, it has actually been a while. I think it's it was uh, one year ago in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it was also mushrooms, or it was mushroom tea, and but it was sort of in a ceremonial setting with shamans. So not not South American shamans, traditional ones, but uh, some let's say new age shamans that that guided uh, the whole session. Um, but yeah, so that that was kind of the. Uh, that the frame and the setting and I would say it was quite uh, intense and it as well it was um, in a group setting which uh, from my experience is always very different from solo tripping actually if I think about it I'm not sure if I've ever done like 40 solo uh, tripping Um, how about this trip that you just had was it solo or with company um, so my, my wife was there. She's typically my, my trip sitter more often than not. And so, yeah, yeah. It, um, I also typically do trip, you know, not, not in a group setting. Uh, I have, I have in a group setting, uh, I've done ayahuasca with a group actually, uh, last, last year, last fall. And so that was the, how long it's been for me. It would probably been, uh, close to six, seven months maybe. And yeah yeah well how how do you find the the group setting versus more of a, an individual kind of setting very different actually well i mean it also depends on the group so i would differentiate yeah. there there's this maybe more um casual tripping in a group when it's more about just fun and yeah. then or interaction with the group and then there's the more ceremonial one in the group where there is still a focus to turn inward usually. Um, you know, usually it is a group setting, yet everybody gets maybe these blindfolds or at least you get a blanket. And the idea is still that everybody turns inwards, yet at least in, in parts of the trip, you know, you notice what other people are going through. And I, I think it certainly influences you. Yeah. It influences your experience. You influence other people's experience. And then there's also this phenomena that there seems to be group dynamics which play out differently, you know, under the influence of psychedelics, where it's you can almost take part of somebody's experience, or yeah. perhaps your empathy is more highlighted uh, that you that you can sense better what people are going through, and in that way it can you know it can also pull you in, it can. Uh, make your experience more intense. It can change your experience. This is kind of the, uh, the interactions I've seen in a group. And then doing it solo is, you know, it is just you and your subconscious after sometimes. I, I mean, depending on how strong the dose is. But, you know, so it's more just you interfacing with yourself versus the group. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I find it fairly similar. I, I do have a tendency to just turn turn inward even even when i am with the group i i tend to be maybe a little bit less uh inter- interactive i i sometimes depending upon the dosage you know i almost get a little bit catatonic you could say 
and not really, I don't really seem to be doing a lot. Sometimes I do have like uh, a lot of tremors. Honestly, I experienced a lot of tremors. I, I don't know. What about you? Do you ever get tremors when you're tripping? Depends on what kind, like uh, specifically on LSD, yes. Hmm. So some kind of like uh, muscle tenseness, muscle twitching, a little yeah. bit of tremoring. I do experience that. Um, or do you mean more of the uh, the tremor that is similar, like trauma release exercise, where it's like really shaking of the muscle? Or do you mean that? Um, I, I, I guess for me, I usually think of it, I have... Um, just, just kind of jerks, jerks like um, very, very spontaneous. It, it doesn't really last a lot, but it's sort of just like you, you just jump a little bit, mm -hmm. or or a certain muscle somewhere just just like moves really, really quickly. Um, and honestly, it, when I first started experiencing it uh, in some of my earlier trips, it was a little off-putting. You know, like you kind of try to control it a little bit, but in, anymore, I see it almost as like a. Um, kind of an internal adjustment, I guess you could say, like your, your body is kind of unwinding some tension. And, and that's actually one of the interesting aspects that, that I tend to experience in general is just this significant loosening of, of, my, mus of my muscles in general. And so, for example, I, I was uh, discussing with Nick a little bit before the podcast, uh, it's really easy for me to smile while I'm tripping and like just real naturally it just comes on and and it's there and it, and it feels good and it feels right and that's in fairly significant contrast to my daily life where if i try to smile it's it's a little bit forced and and there's definitely some resistance there and it, it you know it's noticeable to to someone who, who might be you know looking at me or something they can they can tell that it, it's a little bit more forced and and i think we see this on on people's faces all the time Right. And, and so part of my uh, integration now has been really trying to pay attention to the muscles in my face. You know, is there is there tension in my jaw? What, what is it? What is the difference? What is sort of the delta between what I was experiencing while I was tripping and what I'm experiencing in my day to day life? And what what can I do to bridge that gap? Right. Like I want to be able to smile easily. I want to be able to have a, a genuine smile all of the time. So, so what's blocking me, right? So that's that's been a little bit of my integration. I'm I'm curious. Do you experience? Um, or do you become more aware of tension in your body? Is for me that's a really significant uh, point of focus during my trips. Mm -hmm. Here's my theory for for that. So, mm -hmm. in specifically with mushrooms, although actually also with LSD, but there's this uh, phenomena called or what I would call body load, where I feel, especially as the trip sets on, I feel some kind of heaviness. It sometimes also comes at the same time that there's some nauseousness in the stomach area. And then there's, you know, as the trip comes on, yeah, really this, I don't know, some almost like exhaustion, but also maybe tension, uh, which increases, which tends to subside later on. And I think it does not subside on its own, but it's actually all the tension that has been present in your body anyways, on that particular day that you are tripping. And it's that actually that unconscious tension that your body has been holding on recently. And now as your awareness expands and as you're dropping a couple of layers deeper into the presence, you, you actually start becoming aware of it and it's and it starts to well it also starts to annoy you right because you you were not aware that this tension is there now it's there now you need to somehow uh, address it and then there's there's a couple of things which which help me with that body load it's obviously any anything that we discussed previously as grounding so like breathing exercises some kind of yogic poses meditation uh any sort of relaxation technique these kind of things help but actually i think this is the one of the most valuable aspects that you can get out of tripping because this is your somatic layer or Eckhart Tolle would call this the pain body mm -hmm. so if, if we think about our body having except the physical layer that we see that there is some kind of also perhaps emotional body pain body ethereal body 
however different esoteric teachings call these but you know if, if we take that into account the tripping connects you with all of these layers sort of step by step and you have the ability to to suddenly become aware of them so i think also that can cause bad trips for people because mm -hmm. it can be overwhelming that you had some kind of tension energy that was there and now that you're aware of it you actually do not want to face it so yeah. i think we need to meet this um we need to meet this situation with the with the intention that we want to go through it and if you go through it uh, i think it can be um very rewarding both in the trip and afterwards um but yeah i've been rambling for a bit so i'm going to stop for a moment uh, <laughs> no, that, do, that do, was, uh, how does that map on your experience yeah yeah that that aligns very very closely with what i experience and yeah, getting in, in touch with a lot of that pain initially, it can be off-putting pretty significantly. And I, you know, I, I, at this point, I've kind of tripped enough that I I know how to respond to it. I, and that's just always relaxation, just always relaxation. You know, it, it kind of comes in waves for me, like where it'll become more and more intense and, and to, sometimes to the point where I'm you know, don't, don't know how to respond to it. And always, always, it just comes back to, okay, just, just relax. You're okay. Just relax, just relax. And then it kind of subsides and it'll come on again in a wave and almost always. And I, I, I'd even say pretty much always that I reach this point where I, I feel so much more comfortable in my body. Once I've, I've really released a lot of this, I notice that I'm so much more flexible. I, I do yoga fairly regularly. And so I've got a fairly uh, you know clear idea of my level of flexibility. And once I've kind of gotten through the, the heavier part, I, I feel so much lighter. I feel very embodied. I feel very, very, very comfortable in my body. It just feels really, really good. And it feels, feels like in a sense, like this is how it's supposed to be all of the time. And I'm also like so much more flexible. And this, this one kind of just uh, blows my mind a little bit because the degree of change in flexibility is extremely noticeable, right? Like being able to complete, you know, bend over completely with my legs straight and, and reach my feet and even, you know, put, put my torso pretty flatly on, on my legs, which I'm, I'm not very flexible just kind of in general i'm a fairly tall person haven't haven't you know kind of struggled with that in the past but uh yeah especially in that kind of glowing phase of the trip just uh the flexibility is, is very interesting do you notice uh, increases in your flexibility if you kind of go through it and, and come out on the other side um in, yeah. in lighter space totally like if i do yoga on in combination with LSD or, or mushrooms, I'm, I'm so much more flexible. I'm able to uh, dance easier. And in the sense that I feel usually when I dance, I feel very like clunky and not mm -hmm. relaxed. But somehow psychedelics enhance it that you're able to relax a bit and, you know, feel a bit more into your body and kind of sense, okay, where is the tension in my body? And then you start moving in ways that somehow unlocks yeah. that tension. And it, it, it the funny thing is that... Um, so psychedelics for me are almost like a intuitive yoga yeah. uh, in the sense that if I normally do yoga, I would go through a sequence. I would maybe follow a video and, you know, it touches all the parts of my body. So at the end, I would feel more relaxed while uh, when using psychedelics. And by the way, this also works well with, with cannabis. Uh, you connect to your body and you are somehow able to tap into the intuition or I'm not sure if intuition is the right word, but what I mean is you, you are able to feel where exactly is the tension uh, manifesting in your body. And then you're, you know, specifically able to, well, in some way, relax your body in that specific area. So what happens for me is that somehow my body um, awareness or body intelligence, I'm not sure what would be the right word for it, but it gets more accurate. So in a sense that, you know, uh, maybe right now in, in a sober state, I, I'm not fully in control of my body. While on the influence of, of psychedelics, you know, I would be able to, you know, specifically this muscle here, like, you know, twitch it yeah. and then let it loose. And um, th that's a really interesting experience. And I don't know, you know, is that induced by uh, the substance or is that just, are we tapping into 
the awareness that is there all the time? You know, this is kind of the, the questions that are still open for me. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely am very uh, curious about the answer to that question as well. I mean, um, a lot of these substances are, are neurotransmitters essentially, right? So uh, you might be in increasing your, your nervous system's ability to communicate more fluidly, right? Um, but, but to me, part of the biggest question around that is like, what can I do to be in a similar state without using the, the substance, right? Like, I, I the way that I see it, at least, is that it, it's it's showing me a potential, right? Like, I, I know that I am capable of this. Now, why, what is blocking me? What, um, what sort of, I guess you could say, handicaps have I almost developed, you know, through throughout the years, throughout trauma or whatever, that I can work with in such a way that I can become more fully embodied right and and focusing on the body has has always been a very big aspect of of my my psychedelic experiences mm -hmm. how do you feel in the days after the uh, the trip yeah uh that's a really good question i i think honestly there's a little bit of um mm, how should i put this a, a little bit of heading the other direction afterwards sometimes there's a little bit of kind of like a recoil where I almost get into like a more tense state or, you know, I've, I've suddenly been in this, this very loose state and it's almost like it kind of rebounds and, the, and then I get a little bit more tense in, in the time afterwards and then kind of slowly uh, loosen, loosen back up a little bit more. Do you mm. experience something similar? I have, I've had both heaven. I've had experiences both. where, you know, where I overcorrected back to the rigid state uh, that I was in before and I had experiences where I felt that really certain tensions were resolved and yeah. therefore I felt uh, much lighter and this is the more common experience for me and this is also why I experience after psychedelics something that I would call the afterglow so mm -hmm. that I feel contrary to I don't know stimulants MDMA or things like that where you have a hangover and I know for certain that if I take MDMA, I'm going to feel worse for at least two to three days in terms of my uh, tiredness, emotions, and, and, and other aspects. Yet for psychedelics, you know, you can, you can have a, sort of a peak experience and then even afterwards, you know, still surf in that afterglow because you are still very much connected to either your body or whatever you, you connect to. But I mean, th how you describe it, I would say that, you know, you you notice the delta now now you understand the delta between right. your fully relaxed state and your apparently not so relaxed state sometimes when when you're sober and i think it's now you know it's or it's for us to find tools to find the meta skill of attaining full relaxation without the help of plant medicine because I see them sort of as a um, good meaning helper that automatically shift us into this more, what feels like a more natural state. And this is great. And this brings you uh, relief. This, this can bring you ecstasy sometimes, which can be very healing. And it can also, it can actually catapult you to that state while perhaps we would never be able to do it on our own. At least for me, that's sometimes the experience that I feel very rigid, very closed off and catapults me to this place where, where I think, okay, I would have needed four years of meditating to come back to this place. So yeah. it catapults me there. Now I'm able to sort of bookmark this place. This, this is what I do. I try to take like a mental snapshot of how does this feel, uh, this feeling of uh, relaxation, ecstasy, whatever it is, anchor this feeling. And then think about even in the experience, like, what is stopping me from feeling um, like this always? And I think it's then we will learn to identify each of the tension programs that are running in our body. And I think they, they, they are perhaps very specific. So, you know, if, if I have a certain tension in my body, I cannot explain you exactly how to let go of that. You know, maybe it doesn't apply to you, but I think everybody can... Uh, can learn to identify and let them go. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a lot of a lot of good stuff there. So I, I wh- one of the things that comes to mind is uh, psychedelics almost act like an amplifier in, in a mm-hmm. sense. Like it, it amplifies all of the sensations, all of this information that we're kind of already aware of, but it's it's just not very clear. It, it amplifies that to the point where it's like, okay, yeah, I can very clearly, I'm very clearly connected to my body, this tension in my body. Um, and, and also within the mind, right? Like, so everything that we're talking about in terms of the body, I think it, it also applies to the mind. And, you know, so, so maybe we can talk a little bit around that. Uh, so for example, for me, pretty much always reaching a point of just everything is okay. You know, just, just feeling, um, really, really good feeling like, um, there's no problems feeling like my, my problems are, are very trivial like oh that that's really really not a problem feeling like i'm on the right path it oftentimes it feels like a validation of of so many of the practices that i do otherwise that i don't always have the clearest sense of like okay is is this really working um does it make sense for me to continue doing this sort of meditation or, or whatever practice it is usually i feel like i get a very clear objective perspective on those things um does does that resonate with you and, and your experience as well? What uh, what sort of messages, I guess? What sort of you know on the on the more mental side of things? What what does your experience look like? What messages do I get? Um, I'm definitely able to reflect situations in my life uh, in a, in a more what feels like a more clear way. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm stuck in a certain situation, suddenly I'm able to see it from a different angle and uh, the, the the things I learn usually on trips for me are of emotional nature mm-hmm. so I don't usually go to that place of uh, peace and, and everything in my life is uh, feels good rather I actually have to face um, some kind of uh, for, for me difficult emotions something like uh, I have to deal a lot with guilt with, with shame um and these what i see as negative emotions but i think this is due to the nature that i have poor uh, emotional hygiene mm. in some sense you know th- this is the kind of uh, emotions i like attached to mm. and then whenever i go into the psychedelic experience you know this is the first thing that, that that comes up and then you do have to deal with it and i think the emotional experiencing is like next to the um, body and next to the experience of the mind, also the emotional experiencing is very different in uh, under the use of, of psychedelics. And I think that I'm able to process certain uh, emotions much better under the influence of psychedelics. So that's actually my work usually. So that's the, the thing that happens for me if I, if I turn inwards is, okay, there's this unprocessed stuff lying around <laughs> and it's just okay let me pick this and you know if i'm in a, a, in a in a good state if i'm not having a bad trip you know if i'm sort of content and, and like then then it's totally fine because under the influence of psychedelics i'm able to not attach to them this time and you know and this time let them fully run through my body let them run through my experience and so on and then they actually dissolve and this is also the um the thing which in turn creates the um, the lightness for me is the fact that I, you know, let them fully run through. And then the next day I do feel the difference. I do feel lighter than the day before because, you know, now they're not in my body anymore. So we have that that somatic, that body aspect that we talked about. For me, very strong component is the emotional component. It's sort of the where I do the learning, where I improve my emotional skills, so to speak. And then you started talking about it but the version in the different topic was the, the mind aspect. And I think this is also interesting because observing the mind and influence of psychedelics also is very different. And its effect on us, its grip on us is a different one. And also for me, a topic of um, practice because the, the, for me, the mind is what makes the difference between a good and a bad trip. Because you, you said earlier that uh, psychedelics are like an amplifier yeah. and they feel to me as an amplifier to the mind as well so the mind can also hijack 
or the mind also gets amplified during the onset of a psychedelic experience. And depending on what the habits have been in the recent path leading towards the trip, I feel this is exactly what gets amplified. So if you have yeah. been ruminating a lot in, in the weeks before the trip, you know, at least that's my experience. That's where I go. I start ruminating. I start going into a loop of bad thoughts. Uh, and this is exactly the playground then. Like, because if you manage to not follow your mind when it's going down a bad rabbit hole and you you start to go into the opposite direction or into relaxation, then you arrive at this place that you're describing as, you know, you feel content, you feel peace, you feel that you feel positive uh, emotions. Yet, this is also one of the more, um, what I find still, what I find actually in every psychedelic chip, I find that difficult and somehow it doesn't get easier. Hmm. So, you know, it, it's, it's like um, maybe comparable to cold showers. Hmm. They don't get better really. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like they hmm. suck every time. Yet you you know that you will master them in some sense. You know you 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 can withhold three minutes of whatever of cold. Yet you know they will suck going in. For me, it's the same with psychedelics. It's like ah, uh, my mind is gonna go shitty places. I know I'm gonna you know be able to deal with it, but um, I don't know. How's it for you? Does that get better for you with time or? Um, you know, I I think it has. So I I can recall back. Um... So I, I guess just for a little bit of context, I've probably been experimenting with mushrooms for maybe 12 years or so. And I've in that time, I've probably taken, uh, I, I honestly lost count, maybe, maybe 60 or more trips. Um, in the beginning, it was a lot more frequent. Uh, as of recently, it's maybe once a year, maybe once every six months or so. Oftentimes, um, I'm very hesitant, and it takes me a long time to actually finally decide to, to do it and then actually do it. Um, but does that part get easier? I, I can recall back where I would, I'd call it almost like this bizarro circus, like very dark kind of just getting kind of trapped. I mean, off, oftentimes the thought loops. Um, I don't experience that very much anymore if 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 at all really i've kind of just gotten to the point where whenever that stuff comes up i'm just like oh okay and then i just relax and just relax and just relax i mean if, if anything i'm just like constantly constantly relaxing and there are these waves that kind of start to come up and build up and it, it might start to get a little bit freaky for like a second or two but then i just relax and it all just kind of subsides in terms of the mental content, um, for me, as of the last maybe, I don't know, 10 or, or 20 times I've done it, it's always had like this kind of biblical, um, very divine sort of uh, God, Jesus oriented, which is kind of interesting because I don't really consider myself like a, a very religious person. And I didn't have a lot of exposure to that in, in childhood. Um, so, for example, in this most recent trip, um, if, if you want to call it a message, I, it, it wasn't so intense. I wouldn't necessarily call it like a vision this time. It was more like a, a feeling or sort of an intuitive knowing what, what came to me um, and, and what I felt was like the truth very, very like firmly, very clearly was this sense of everything's okay and that uh, evil is is very much so an illusion and kind of in the in the final judgment if you could call it that in the final uh, in just kind of the final estimation I guess you might say that you know and I feel so weird even saying these things honestly that that God wins because there's no there's no contest everything that evil was even made out of evil was just made out of God. So there was no, no contest in the end. And uh, yeah, a lot of my trips kind of have this, this content and I, I honestly don't know what to do with it because it's kind of hard to integrate something like that. Like it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Um, it feels so weird to talk about it now because I'm not in touch with that. I'm not feeling that right now. Um, mm -hmm. but that, that content just comes up a lot for me. It didn't used to, 
but it, it has been more and more. And, you know, like, what do you do with that? Yeah, your uh, your camera is frozen again. Yeah, uh -huh. the song happens always after thirty minutes. Yeah, let me see if I can fix it real quick. And is your mic still the correct source? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So my my association, as you're uh, telling about this uh, this experiences that you're having, is that it might relate to the base trust that um, you perhaps have with the world or with the universe. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think be, because when you're saying that like everything is all right that this is kind of the realization or the sensation that you're having that everything uh, is is good uh, in trin inherently um i don't think I, i don't take that for granted so to experience the the world or the universe from that perspective i think is uh not many people have that experience per default i think yeah. life is a lot of struggle hardship and suffering for people. And I think there is value in, in, in suffering, which is a whole yeah. different topic, of course. But to have that knowing and being connected with that with that ultimately everything is going to play out for the better, I think is a very uh, important thing to to carry. And I don't know, is that something, is that a new realization for you or you were in touch with that anyways before? Yeah, it, you know, it's one that comes up pretty consistently for me. And um, I, I'd say that I don't really maintain contact with that. Like it, you know, when, when I'm in the experience, it's, it's very real. It, it's very clear. But then when I come out of it, it, it's like almost, it almost sounds very hollow. Even when I'm talking about it, it sounds kind of like unreal because it's not coming from my immediate experience anymore. So there is like a little bit of a residual um, sense of well-being, I guess you could say, that, that kind of persists from that. But it's it's nothing like compared to when I'm in it. You know, I mean, when I'm in it, just my my confidence, my my capacities in, in so many ways just, just increase massively. And the things that I seem to struggle with on, on a day-to-day -day basis are not, you know, they're They're, they're trivial. They're pretty much like totally blown away, right? And that, that's one of the reasons that I'm so interested in kind of, as I, as I put it, bridging that gap, figuring out like, okay, what, what is it that, I mean, obviously besides the substance, because I, I do believe, and, and I have had experiences, whether it be through breath work or meditation, where I can access very, very similar states. Um, so I know that it's not just the substance right i know that this is accessible otherwise um i don't know if i answered your question or not there yeah uh, the, so how to bridge the the, the gap is, is the question i think one of the mind fucks there is that perhaps it's not that difficult to uh, attain that state because it does feel like that that is actually the the natural state Yeah. And that we created all of these artificial programs and patterns and defense mechanisms to protect our precious heart or ego. And that all of these patterns and programs are, are actually not the natural ones. And if we would fully relax, we would actually fall right back into it and would be able to have this uh, experience completely sober. And... I think we already know about a, a lot of practices. And I think it's it, it can actually so it provides real important pointers I, for me the, the psychedelic experience because the longer I rest in the fully relaxed state of being, of being connected, of feeling content, of feeling relaxed, of feeling in touch with the universe, 
or feeling that everything is going to be all right at the end, the easier it is for me afterwards to sink back into that into that space while meditating. Yeah. And I think this, this is exactly what, what we need to uh, learn is where to put our focus where the experience is like that. Because I, I think that this uh, experience is actually available to us all of the time. Yet it's just, you know, we're, po we're pointing our attention into all the wrong directions. And, you know, it is present all the time with us. And it's about connecting back with that uh, experience, even in a uh, in a sober state. And I think it's it's absolutely possible. Yeah, yeah. And for me, one of the best ways to connect to it is through any sort of um, movement, uh, physical activity. The breath work ends up being like very physical, often. Uh, really, anything that to really helps get me in my body. In fact, I'm. I'm thinking I'm, I'm probably gonna go for a jog or a run after we record this just to, to kind of get more into that headspace. Um, and, and an interesting sort of aside, one of the programs I attended that, that did produce a, a very profound shift within me, one of the aspects of that program that seemed uh, probably the most efficacious was um, bringing us to a point of exhaustion. So there's this one activity that we did, I've maybe even mentioned it before, um, it was called like the dance of destruction or something where they were just beating the drums faster and faster and everyone was blindfolded and we were just kind of like dancing around like mad people. And at the end of that, that little practice, I was, I mean, you know, for, for lack of a different description, I'm going to say I was very, very high, right? Like my, my consciousness felt very, very expanded. I was very much so in, you know, what we'll call that high psychedelic type headspace, right? Um, and so, you know, physical exercise, runner's highs, I, I think those are kind of bordering on, on a similar, uh, a similar experience. Um, I'm, I'm curious, do, do you, do you find that to, to, to be true at all? And yeah, I, I also, I actively utilize this regularly. So I think this is what keeps my uh, sport routine in place that I go like either running or, or lightweight, uh, weightlifting three or four times a week is I actually need that as a regulation mechanism. And yeah. I don't know if it's the endorphins. I mean, actually, I enjoy the, the endorphins after a good run for sure. But it's it's actually uh, for me more the struggle I go through, like on a really on a, on a physical level, like, you know, like, uh, well, the, the, just the resistance that your body has. If, if you if you do some some exercise, the sweating that happens, the mental resistance is it is almost like uh, you can um, speed run your mental processing during exercise for me. Mm. What, what I mean by that is, um, I don't know, you had an eventful day, let's say, mm -hmm. a regular eventful day at work or whatever. Usually for me that requires that an evening I also do some reflection. At least that's what I'm required before I can fall asleep peacefully. You know, just let the whatever happened during the day pass once more through your mind. And if really a lot of things happen during the day, my reflex would be, okay, let me do some sports. It's just after I'm done with the sports, I just feel relaxed, like both physically and mentally for uh, for, for some reason. And I think that this is underappreciated. Um, yeah. I didn't know about this for a long time. This kind of started only in my 30s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, I probably don't utilize it nearly as much as as I should, right? Since I have got that understanding that yeah, this really does help put you into that space. It really does help you regulate so well that uh, you know. And it, it's it's something that we all know. And it, it's almost like cliche. Like oftentimes, if you're say browsing Reddit and somebody's asking for advice around depression, one of the top things you're going to see is exercise, 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 right? And and we know it. And sometimes it's just a tough pill to swallow. It's like, uh, yeah, maybe, but you know. And and then you don't go out and do it. And uh, you know, if if nothing else, the psychedelics is really just showing me like, get out and exercise. Right? Yeah. What a, what a simple message. Yeah. So, yeah, go and exercise to feel better mentally. I know it's very cheesy and generic. Maybe something less less generic or a message I often hear from psychedelics. 
and from cannabis also by the way it's a it's also a reminder for me uh, on that topic it's it reminds me of or it tells me like well how you're supposed to feel good you're eating shit food you're eating shit processed food um you have really you you drink like four coffees a day before luckily i don't do it anymore you know before i used to smoke cigarettes jesus christ you know i put all of this shit in my body and then sometimes i don't exercise for for a, a week sometimes not for months it ends and it's, it's almost like you know the psychedelic trip is shaking me and going like well how the fuck you think that you're supposed to feel good if you're intoxicating your body all the time you're not giving movement to the to the muscles of of your body uh, and then with the help of the psychedelic you know we're able to shake loose for a little bit we get that 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 little feeling of also body uh, ecstasy we we come back into the body but when the trip is over you know your your body is still metabolizing all the shit that you ate before and your muscles are getting all stiff because there's you know there's no more blood flow in them your your joints are all starting to to crack and so on so may, maybe that's also one of the reminders is that we cannot blindly walk around treat our body like uh, like shit and expect to feel ecstatic i think yeah. you know it, it's again a hard pill to swallow but i think it's what it comes down to we cannot have a shitty diet you know and expect to feel uh, ecstatic maybe some people are maybe some yogis you know have that mental concentration that for them it doesn't matter or some overweight uh, enlightened masters that we see that it seems for them it doesn't impact them but for for me it certainly does like if i get into a phase where i become overweight you know it impacts my mood so much yeah yeah absolutely it's uh, it's almost ironic because so many of the things that are bad for us that we turn to we turn to in order to feel good right we we turn to junk food or we turn to or at least in order to cope right with not feeling good and it, it tends to you know it gives us that that dopamine that temporary hit right and it feels good for a little bit and that's that's what's so insidious about it right um it, it's so much easier to, to to take a pill or or to eat a bag of chips than it is to go for a run at least for oh for me i don't know about others but um yeah and and then it's it, it's funny because so many you know you can take a trip and get into this you know exotic space and experience things just just so far removed from your your day-to-day -day life but at, at the end of the trip the message is go exercise the message is the message is when you really you know kind of look through it you know and you you kind of you know shed shed the um maybe esoteric type interpretation so for example i was talking about like the the, the god aspects and stuff you know putting that aside that the message is really just that everything's okay the message is you know go out and exercise the message is connect with your body the message is you know do all of these important foundational things that we all we all know are important but the the psychedelic is just kind of like beating you over the head and saying like hey you know do this stuff and it and it's delivering it to you in in almost a in sort of a hidden way almost but but the message I, I think is still there and it's still pretty pretty clear yeah and one one thing that happens for me is that i become more sensible uh, to these things so i think you know we we have decided to go down this path and and for me it seems that there's no more going back and what that means is mm. that if i have a psychedelic experience i'm going to come out of it and i'm going to feel shitty about certain behaviors because you know yeah. they, they become more visible to you or the effects become more visible to you something simple as i don't know my posture is shit you know it, it's the same thing i cannot expect to feel uh, calm and confident you know if, if i'm all the time having a posture like this where my heart is closed my lungs are closed i'm not getting enough oxygen you know this is the kind of reminders to Okay, if I want to feel a certain way, you know, I, I, I got to make it work. And it is enforced on me by becoming more sensible to it. So, uh, I don't know. For example, right now I'm having a, a phase again where I feel really uncomfortable because... Um, what is the reason right now? Because I... 
I don't exercise uh, enough and I feel that immediately. So right now my threshold is like two days. Mm. If I go three, four days, you know, it's the day becomes almost unbearable for me. So, you know, mm. I, I've gotten my body used to this routine of every couple of days I exercise. And now, now it's, it's, it's not a, a, a choice anymore. And I have a feeling it's, it's always like this when, uh, when I use either cannabis or, or psychedelic that another thing is revealed to me, but then you need to follow up on it. Yeah. And you need to start discontinuing this, this, this thing from your life. Otherwise, you're going to feel miserable. Right, right. And, and it's that way that psychedelics really aren't panaceas, right? They don't, they don't solve all of your problems by any means. If, if anything, it, it really just increases your awareness. And this is something that I, a, a theme that I come back to over and over and over again, that really the name of the game is just increasing your awareness and then integrating what you've become aware of into your life, like respecting it, essentially. I mean, that's that's kind of what integrating a psychedelic trip is about. It's about the awareness of what you experienced, the contrast between what you experienced and what you experienced on a day-to-day -day basis, and then respecting the foundations of that experience. And, and those foundations can be, do tend to be very, you know, you could say mundane relative to the experience, but it, it's stuff like exercise. It's stuff like taking care of yourself. And it's, it's interesting. Like at what point do you finally kind of accept the lesson and, and just, you know, <laughs> just keep, keep it up. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe I'm a little bit stubborn, a little bit hard headed. And so it takes a, a while for some of these lessons to just totally sink in. But I, you know, and inevit inevitably, I think um, we tend to numb ourselves to these lessons, right? Like there's a tendency for, for me, it's like, okay, well, I notice that these things work really well, or I notice that marijuana even, for example, puts me into a, a pretty good space where I'm connected with my body and I'm more inclined to, you know, take care of it really well. But then I, I go a little bit astray and I'll just be like, okay, well, I'm just going to smoke more marijuana and then I'll feel better. And, and that, you know, inevitably doesn't work right which is a, a good thing honestly yeah. that it that it doesn't just totally solve the problem because we do need to do these things we do need to have like these basic physiological hygienic type practices yeah well when, when is it over i guess when when we're ready to let go of the crutches because we are relying on all of these old behaviors that we learned to keep us in a low or in this low key dullness of, uh, I really don't want to attend to that problem right now. Um, but, you know, I have this thing called sugar or whatever it is, which, you know, makes me bridge the, the gap. And I think we can uh, keep it running almost forever. I think people keep these behaviors running all of their lives you you could also you know you could smoke mariana like every day uh, and, and feel okay but yeah i guess this is not the the choice you have you have made so now the question is you know what is preventing you to let go of that old crutch if you if you have already identified it um to do it right now yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, habit energy, maybe mm -hmm. I don't want to say lack of willpower because I, I feel like I, I do probably have the willpower. I would say if, if I were going to pin it to one thing, I would say a lack of awareness, right? Because when I'm in that space where I'm like very, very connected, very aware of my body, then there's really no question. And it's like, it, you know, there's no, I'm not going to make the other choice anymore because the other choice is just so painful. It, it's like increasing your awareness amplifies, uh, of course, uh, naturally, it makes sense, amplifies your awareness of the ways that you're causing your own suffering. And that's very uncomfortable. So you can do one of two things with that. You can start to numb your awareness so that you're no longer aware of those things, or you can kind of integrate that and, and help yourself maintain that level of awareness by by respecting it, by doing the things that you know that you need to do, 
uh, and and mm-hmm. why we go through the same cycles over and over. Um, I suppose uh, again, maybe it comes down to a lack of awareness of you know not having that that longer perspective of oh okay I've I've been here a hundred times before a thousand times before and it didn't get me anywhere. It didn't get me where I wanted to go. I need to do something different in this case. And just mm-hmm. maintaining that, uh, focusing on that, realizing that I do need to make these changes to, to really, if, if I want to feel good, if I want to feel connected, if I want to feel like healthy, if I want to feel good in my body, if I want my mind to, you know, work the way that I want it to work, I need to do these things and there's just really no no question there's there's no f- further need for deliberation it's that's just the way it is hmm. in uh, in one of the books by Eckhart Tolle I think it was in the, in the power of now but he proposes uh, sort of an exercise uh, how you could make yourself familiar with that mechanism uh, it would be sort of like dipping into it in the sense that so you have a um, a mechanism in place that your body or your mind triggers uh, in certain situations or that is your coping mechanism i don't know for simplicity's sake let's let's take cigarettes people that are addicted to cigarettes will notice pretty well and so there there's a because we use these tools for um regulation right so there there's Perhaps you're really noticing a tension in your body because a feeling starts to come up which you haven't processed, but perhaps you, you, you should have and it comes up and you're like, yep, yeah, where's my cigarettes? You know, might smoke a cigarette and you want to light up that cigarette because you're going to know it's going to deliver. It's going to, you know, hit your dopamine receptors and bye-bye bad feeling for like another 10 minutes. And then you're going to think about how you're going to deal with it then, right? So we know the situation. And, and his proposal was... Do not act on it for three minutes. Yeah. It's like you're going to smoke a cigarette in three minutes, but just sit there for three minutes and see what does that thing want from you. And in that three minutes, you can already flood it with a little bit of um, awareness because actually awareness seems to be is what is the antidote to uh, to all these uh, distraction and dulling uh, patterns is you know bring awareness into it and then it actually um dissolves and then it's not uh, needed anymore and with that three minutes you know you could just um make yourself familiar in sort of a safe way you're not committing yet to saying like i'm not gonna do it but you're gonna you're gonna see what is it maybe it's not the charging as i expect you know that's uh, kind of the base Mm. idea yeah yeah really just kind of staying open to it. I, I think that's another really important lesson that, that I've learned over and over again on psychedelics is just really staying open to whatever is coming up and maybe, you know, to to the best of my ability, dropping some of my preconceived notions because we, we tend to, I notice within myself at least, that I have a tendency to sort of deceive myself, right? Like, Maybe it's about whether or not to go out for for a run or something, and I, I can deceive myself into, well, you know, I, 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 maybe I feel okay. Maybe I feel okay. Maybe I don't. I don't really need to do that, right? Like we we do this all the time, and it, it is kind of numbing. It is kind of like a, a lack of awareness, and you know, uh, it's interesting how we we keep coming back to these same themes over and over. It's just awareness, awareness, right? Uh, really, I can't help it, but I'm gonna. Uh, quote, quote a book, I, I, I guess, uh, one of my favorite books, actually. Yeah, it's called Awareness by this guy, Anthony DeMello. Uh, really enjoyable to listen to this one. Uh, he's got a fun accent and a, a nice nice humor to him. Uh, just also a really amazing teacher in general. Um, but uh, so, so the little anecdote that he tells is this, this guy goes to the guru. The guru is currently... Um, you know, uh, observing silence, and so he asks he asks the guru for for some some words of advice, and the guru writes down on a piece of paper. He writes down awareness, and and the guy's like, okay, uh, cool. You know, can you elaborate on that? Can you give me a little bit more? And so he gives the paper back to the guru. The guru gives it back to him, and he he had written awareness, 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 right? Like it it all just really comes down to that. It's it's not you know, there's nothing. Um, nothing more to it than that nothing more that you have to understand right and 
some of these the most profound lessons can often be so seemingly mundane, right? That we overlook them. That we're just like, oh, that that's not it. I need some some magical. I need I need something huge. I need something like some revelation, right? But <laughs> that's that's one of the ways that we deceive ourselves. I think as I'm saying it right now, I realize that we're we're searching for something like special we're looking for fireworks and revelation and and really you you can get there sure but the way to get there is through the mundane it's through connecting with the body it's you know through taking good care of yourself and and for some of the for some folks it seems like these things just come really really naturally uh, for others of us maybe it has to do with childhood trauma or or whatever but it can be such a, a struggle such such an up uphill battle to really acknowledge these things and integrate them yeah we're looking for fireworks but instead of that we're also getting a bunch of just awkward uncomfortable stuff you know because that's what you what you basically need to uh, to face when you're looking for right. where do where does my mind start playing tricks on me where does my mind start dissociating where does my mind start applying all these patterns it's usually in all the moments where we feel uncomfortable and where we're not willing to look so you know I think maybe that's also um, preventing us a little bit. Like, why, why don't I just, you know, from today, stop doing all of the things that are creating tension in my body and go like full relaxation? Well, because on the way there, you know, you have to face a bunch of uncomfortable stuff that you're putting off to, to face. So I guess it's also okay to say, you know, I'm going to do this step by step. And yeah. some people say, some therapy formats suggest that the body knows its pace and you you shouldn't rush it i think that's that's an idea um in somatic experiencing as well that you know we should not push the body to to go through processing of these traumas but you know it will go in its own pace and that's maybe something we we have to also accept that you know we cannot change yeah. from today to tomorrow um and become like uh, superhumans and that's also okay but yeah. any undone pattern you know brings in more awareness brings you one step closer and you know you know that you're on the right track you're going to get there but it's going to, it's going to take time yeah yeah and i think that's a really important note is because we are you know especially in our culture we're looking for the quick fix and and even if the quick fix is something like exercise we're you know maybe we're doing it with uh, a little bit of mm, deceptive intention right like I'm, I'm just gonna fix everything i'm not, you know maybe it's it's no longer the the sugar or or whatever that's your panacea and now, now it becomes the exercise right like we can very easily um turn something that's that's very helpful and and you know good for us in into you know its own obsession right and and in our pursuit of you know trying to get to the end much much faster than than maybe we're ready right and I, I think that's just so important to acknowledge that I mean it's it's very liberating in one sense it's like hey it's going to take you a while to get there you don't have to do it today you don't have to do it tomorrow um and and it's also liberating in the sense that okay maybe you don't have to totally drop all of those coping habits right uh, just bring a little bit more awareness to them. Wait, wait three minutes. Wait one minute. Wait thirty seconds or something before you in indulge in that. And right. And again, it brings us back to okay. Well, the solution isn't any particular prescription, other than always move in the direction of increasing awareness to the best of your ability. And so that's even bringing awareness to some of those less skillful coping habits, right? If you can do it with awareness, eventually it will resolve itself. And so we don't have to be so forceful with ourselves. And I, I think that's the good news, right? Like it actually, I, I think we work against ourselves when we are very, very forceful. Um, and, and so it makes sense to kind of accept where we're at, which can be really difficult especially when we've got an idea that we're much further along than we are right i i know that i definitely succumb to that trap especially in terms of you know the, the path and meditation i like to think i'm further along than perhaps i am and i need to kind of permit myself i need to give myself a little bit more grace in a sense and be like okay i'm, I'm not so far along i i'm okay that i have these coping habits and i just need to to do them uh, with awareness and intention Mm. it's really good timing to talk about this uh, today because um, 
the way that you're phrasing it kind of speaks to me because I'm really in a phase right now where you know I, I thought that just recently um, I integrated some things I, I found difficult uh, emotionally you know and you you feel that sort of relief and, and you think oh, okay this is cool I hope this is going to last a bit and and now I'm sort of in a phase where suddenly you know I, I feel very triggered I feel mm. uh, my body is, is somehow very activated very in overdrive I constantly have to put in effort to like stay relaxed and it just feels like oh, oh my god like it just feels like I don't know three years ago you know it feels like I have made some steps backwards but yeah the way you phrase it um it's probably just you know it's normal it's yeah we have to accept that um even after we integrated a bunch of stuff there's again going to come some phases where a body is saying okay we have to take this one easy yeah i i really like to remind myself of something that michael singer says around this and he says that um when when you're working with his his technique of relax and release it's yeah and so good it's it's none of your business how many times you're gonna have to relax and release with this particular uh samskara is words that he uses um and and that's very humbling right because we want to employ these techniques in order to you know understandably of course in order to alleviate some of this discomfort um and and just to kind of you know, this is this is just a reminder of like, hey, take take the attitude of of accepting where you're at and accepting that this isn't necessarily going to just totally fix things. Um, one one thing that's helped me around that is seeing it more as I'm not trying to alleviate this, but rather I'm trying to uh, shift my relationship to it. I don't know if it's going to go away. You know, it 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 might subside and it might come back. But the important part is the way that I relate to it when it does come up, right? And I, I feel like that's a, a decent goal to have, is to improve my relationship to the things that otherwise bother me. Yeah. Although, you know you know how it is. It, it is hard when, you know, the experience, I, I don't want to have this experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So thinking about, okay, this might stay forever um, is, is difficult in the moment. But yeah. perhaps that's exactly the attitude that, we should have you know uh, try to give it some acceptance and allow the experience to happen uh, because funnily enough that's that's all the experience usually wants from us you know just to be experienced be acknowledged be felt be whatever um, it is uh, and then it somehow dissipates afterwards but you know time and time again it is somehow difficult right yeah yeah um shoot that feels like almost a good good place to end it it feels like a yeah hmm. i think we rounded it up uh pretty pretty well with this one um so yeah thank you that was again an awesome conversation <laughs>